Ladies and gents, welcome to Lowy the Legends. These players are mid 700 elo. And in the yellow in the north, we have Nightshade. And Nightshade is playing up against Poop in My Coffee. Yeah, that's the username here. And uh, I imagine Blue, it Blue decided of all the names that could be chosen for usernames on the internet that this was it, right? Of all the possible combinations. If this individual decided on this name, that the gameplay is going to be rather unique, all right? So that's kind of how I decided to pick this. I said, this person's not going to play meta. Something, something's... There are some wires that are crossed. There's some things missing. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a really good game. Um, so Khmer in the South for coffee, let's say. Um, and... Very early Rhino lore. Good work. Oh god, the goat is blocking! Okay, this is fine. Uh, Khmer can be really fun for, for the farming later on. Uh, Khmer are nice because you don't have to build any buildings to unlock things. So you don't need your Dark Age buildings to go feudal. You don't need to have your um, your barracks before your stable and you know, so on. So it's especially good if you don't necessarily know the order of things. Uh, the Romans... They do have to stick to that order, but the Romans, they are good overall with their efficiency. 5% greater efficiency throughout their eco. Really good with infantry and cav. And this sieve is a bit newer, and I also don't have the elo here, so we're just going to put 750-ish. Because uh, I don't have it memorized. Um, I also think because Nightshade isn't Viper... And I hate to do it so far into the cast. I think I'm just going to make Nightshade red. With this desert terrain, it just makes things look a lot better. Maybe Nightshade is going to be a player who's super well known for picking yellow in the future. Or, or maybe Nightshade, like so many other people, picks yellow, hoping to have the skills of the Viper, and then quickly finds out that the color does not actually help at all. Um, Funny story as far as that's concerned, by the way. So... The version of the game we're playing now is the Definitive Edition. It came out in uh, 2019. Uh, there were earlier versions uh, of like remakes. So there was the HD Edition in 2013, for example. But the version that like the majority of the dedicated community played on was called Voobly, which was a bit like Game Ranger, if you guys have never heard of Game Ranger. It's basically like that, only there was a lot of community-focused things there for age specifically. And it was really, really good for the game for, for that time period. So, like Steam, uh, there was a mod center in uh, on Voobly, okay? So you could, like, download your small trees and download various mods. One of the mods there was called the Viper Hotkeys, okay? And maybe Hardy can edit in the actual number later, because I think that mod should still exist there. But I just think this is so funny, right? So Viper... Uh, one of the greatest players ever. The GOAT in, in like, I think everyone's eyes. Uh, obviously, you know, this year hasn't been the winningest player in Age of Empires, which is, like, a big mind-blowing thing. But anyways, like, dominated the scene for, like, a decade. No one else is winning, blah, 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 right? I'm pretty sure over 50,000 people downloaded his hotkeys. 50K. 50,000 people were like, hmm, I think I should be pretty good at this game. Something's not right here. Maybe it's his hotkeys. <laughs> and they downloaded the hotkey scheme. Now, it's not like that crazy, right? Like, to, to download the hotkey scheme of a really good player does maybe make sense. But uh, the thing you should know about hotkeys, as Mr. Coffee here is pushing in some deer, is um, it's all preference, right? It's all preference. Like, I think the best players actually have hotkeys, which wouldn't might not work for the average individual. It's just that players are just used to it after, you know, 10 years of playing the game. So, I, I thought that was funny note. You guys might not care about it at all, but... I've noticed that Blue is very active. Um, dropping off food a lot. Brought in the Rhino super early. Super fast feudal age here. Blue seems like a, a player who can't help but click all, units all the time. Blue's just like, I need the next thing to do. Very aggressive player. But like right there, for example, villagers going this way. Now this villager's coming back. Like blue's going to click villagers to do something in excess soon. I could just feel it. 
Red has been a little bit more relaxed about things. Red hasn't had the craziest timing. Red's not really even scouting the enemy yet. Still at home. Both players had a pretty solid Dark Age, though. Let's see. Blue actually found the enemy scout there somehow. It will be in Feudal Age here in a second. And we're going to see gold. Um, so, you know, initially I was thinking maybe a scout rush would be good for the Khmer here. How are they both scouting in the same direction? This is pretty wild. Let's see. And if you see the four tile gold that's not close to your base, you should know the enemy base is somewhat close to that. Barracks now for Nightshade. And very exposed barracks. And villagers going to gold, so I think we could expect some man-at-arms. The Romans get double armor on their infantry. Does feel like the timing's decent enough here for Nightshade to make infantry. And we have a stable now for coffee. Now, here's the thing, right? We've got some things that don't necessarily click together right now. Because you've got the gold mining, but you can't immediately spend gold if you're going... For scouts, scouts would be more food. The balance isn't perfect, but you wouldn't necessarily expect the balance to be perfect at this rank. A stable now for Nightshade. So they're actually both on gold to go scouts? I mean, in theory, you could use some of the gold for the Bloodlines upgrade, which is researchable in the stable. It is 100 gold and 150 food. Red shows up, just passing through Blue's base. Good work. Blue still has not located the enemy. At least, you know, anything beyond the military there. Look, Blue sees the starting scout from Red and has to click it. I, I, <laughs> it is, I really like this player. <laughs> I mean, beyond having to say the name out loud on the internet, like, I'm, I'm intentionally trying to say Blue's username in a way where it's not a sentence that someone clips and it's it's not like a three second sound bite you know because i'm not i'm by no means like trying to request blue's username please don't but okay big action here two villagers exposed and blue microing like a beast here and yeah red wants to go scouts and red wanted to go bloodlines so red already has the bloodlines upgrade in queue no spearmen, though. I feel like we're missing a step here. A spearman or two could be really nice. Blue did research um, armor already for the scouts and is clearly a huge micro nerd. Ready to kill. Red seems a little worried by the times here. Might make sense for Red to either make spearmen or fight this off with villagers for now. Going to run the villagers away. That is our first blood on villagers. And this is a pretty crazy Arabia game. You're seeing the aggression now. Mid-700s. Some villagers on stone. Villagers on gold. Look at the amount on food now for blue. Nice farming eco. Nice execution. Red does have the stronger army now, though. With bloodlines being in. Red has to get the villagers back to work. It, it, this, like... I think is at the rank where... Players have the skill to potentially go for a really solid scout build. That's exactly what Blue has done. And, like, Blue is already steamrolling Red in terms of efficiency and eco just because of that scout timing. You see all of that idle time from Red? Because Red's focused on trying to deal with this. All right. Like, okay, hold on. I need to... Because I need to paint a picture here. I think some people fail to get it, okay? This is what an economy looks like on like, this is what your workplace looks like on Wednesday at like 11 a.m., all right? This is what your workplace looks like on Friday, an hour before you're off work. Does that make sense? You know, people are just like, okay, I'm so done with this. I've dealt with this crap all week. We've had three scouts to our base. They somehow had armor. I'm so sick of this. I reported this 16 times to Jeff. Jeff still hasn't dealt with it. I'm so ready to go home. That, that's the difference. Again, I've been out of like a traditional workplace for a while, so I'm still trying to make sure I remember things. I think that makes sense. 
So, Blue made three scouts with armor. And my suggestion normally here would be keep it up, right? Keep being aggressive, keep doing something, and you'll be in a good spot. Blue, wow, still keeping an eye on those scouts. This player seems pretty quick, has lots of potential. Blue's going to back away. And Blue clearly here wants to click up to Castle Age. Hasn't done so just yet, now does so. Okay. Your opponent has scouts, your opponent has spears. If red were to move forward and attack here, blue could be in trouble. And we are not seeing that. I think just the amount of aggression from blue, maybe the name from blue too, has worried red. Uh, do we know when Kami games are coming back? This Friday, community games will be back. Good question. But I'm definitely seeing the ELO now. I actually th I feel like this blue player is putting on more aggression than I expected in this game. It's pretty solid. Couple walls. Obviously, there's holes in the walls. But, like, focusing on the aggression. Red is focusing more on, like, surviving and defense for the time being. But if red had, like, any of that army going forward right now, blue is no defense for it. Never made a barracks, so can't make, like, Spearman, for example. Something I would suggest in these instances, guys, is you can continue to make scouts while you're on the way to the next stage, and then get light cav. You can be spending that food. You don't have to necessarily wait for knights. I do think red could be okay, because blue is not showing a sign that there's going to be any instant attack in the next stage with something. Red is determined to, to building wall along the front here. Pretty vulnerable spot to do so. I'd say maybe doing it here would have been a safer area. And here come the scouts. Coffee. Blue Coffee has been very active. And is just passing through. And the spearmen are not in position. Units need to be pulled over. Again, building these buildings on the front, close to where your opponent's base is, is risky. Blue goes to kill the villager, kills the villager, but will lose all the scouts in the process. Red will at least be happy to deal with, to have dealt with that. Okay, archer on the way. And a knight. So switching into archers to deal with spears makes sense. No upgrades yet. Uh, to me, it still feels manageable. I could easily see blue not quite getting the amount of damage in with this army. Like, the scouts that Red has could kill the archers, and the spears could deal with the knight pretty easily. So, But the idea of the archer switch is there. This is a player who's learning and is in a really good spot. The tip here would be you could have be making the archers a little bit earlier. It basically does come down to spending your resources and whatnot, right? T90, does it make sense to get wheelbarrow and handcart when playing Khmer? Um, it, it doesn't make as much sense for farming eco. It's the sieve that you could probably delay those upgrades the most with. Um, but it's not like, it's not like bad, right? Like it's not, it's still an, an, an upgrade that helps other aspects of your eco. But because wheelbarrow helps farming the most, obviously since you don't have to walk to drop off food from the farms, I would say it's not something you have to worry about too much. All right, so this is where, like, it's just a reminder, Age of Empires is, like, such a complete game. So this is what I predict is going to happen. So right now, Blue is looking at Eco, right? Blue has learned three TCs. But what happens is players get so focused on their three TCs, they don't attack. Okay, never mind. I'm wrong. I'm very wrong. God, Blue is actually doing it all. Is this really 700 ELO? This feels like... If I had to guess, I would say, like... 900. Crossbows in. I guess no blacksmith upgrades for the crossbows. These two TCs producing. It's actually getting me into a mid elo mood. Maybe we'll do some 1100 elos today, guys. Siege workshop goes up for red. Pikeman's on the way. Armor on the pikeman. It's actually kind of fun because it's Roman pikemen. And because blue doesn't have that many crossbows and it doesn't have fletching, the pikes could clear this. 
What would be your perfect Age of Empires 5? My perfect Age of Empires 5 would be they don't even try and then they remake Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition and actually fix the pathing and add so when you do ranked team games you don't have to remake the party every time like every other multiplayer game in 2023 um have like profiles and really cool interactive things in game have a better end screen for age of empires 2 when the game you know in capture age how i can select this and show how many kills happen make this possible for the game i would actually invest all my resources like if i was bill gates I'd spend $3 billion in Age of Empires 2 right now. Does that shock you? Yeah, I don't know. But there's a lot of things that Age of Empires 2 could still use. I think it'd make a really good game. Oh, and, and first and foremost, of course, give Tarkin some thumb. <laughs> hmm, game is settled down. Blue is is doing an amazing job. All three town centers are producing bills. Hold on a second. What elo is this? 766? Huh? I mean, to be fair, like Nightshade is is probably thinking the same. Like this player is in my rank. This is sick. It's possible blue was on a losing streak or red had one too many beers or you know, I you just don't know. But I, it really does feel like Blue is is playing a bit stronger here for the time being. Really nice stuff. Like, the combination of knights and crossbows, and then the three town centers is really impressive. Guys, I, I understand why people might think for a second, if someone is better than someone else in a game, they must be smurfing. But think about it logically, right? If they are... If, if it was you and you weren't, would you want people claiming that? Probably not, right? And it's very common for people to underperform at lower ranks and, and also overperform at lower ranks. You will have some games where you think you're a god and you're like, holy crap, this game is awesome. And other games make you want to consider throwing your keyboard out the closest window. It happens, right? So I what I don't want is to have people be accused of, of something like that if that's not actually the case. So that's why I bring it up. All right, there's a lot of things that could still go wrong here for blue. And we're, look we're looking at it right now. Scorpions and pikes moving forward. And the pikes are clearing up the knights. And the pikes have lots of armor. And you know, blue's got all this eco to show for it, but could lose full control of this hill here against the Roman pikemen and Roman scorpions. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Now, the other thing that's really fun, too, Blue does not know that there's a 20 villager lead for their side right now. Blue does not know that. Like, Blue is probably thinking, that's bad. I lost score lead. Oh my god, what have I done wrong? Right? Great job from Red. Now, if you're wondering what to do here, the army that Blue had was actually good. Knights can pick off the scorpions and then uh, crossbow against the pikes. But some upgrades some upgrades were missing there. And the numbers of the scorpions and the pikes was just good enough there for Nightshade. Now, I would not suggest leaving four scorpions on their own underneath an enemy workshop. Especially when your opponent has just shown knights. Scorpions are not that good. And blue should be able to clear all these scorpions with just one knight. Uh, pikes are going to be on the way, though. Uh, Bod Canera is now on the way for Blue, who clearly did a bit of an upgrade check. And Blue is panicking a little bit, has crossbows in Q, but did not use the second range, so has only used this archery range. Making knights and massing crossbows here, though. Has stopped producing villagers, probably due to the stress of the moment. 11 scorpions here! For the Romans. That's a lot of Scorps. Roman Scorpions are cheaper. So again, you've got the extra armor on the Pikes and then cheaper Scorpions. It's really easy to get a big ball. If there was 10 more Pikemen here, I'd say Blue is no chance of fighting it without Manganels. That would be what you need to make here. Like, Manganels on the Scorpions to flatten them would be really good. 
It's going to take Blue some time, but Blue's now producing out of the second range. So Red's probably not going to advance forward until the Siege Workshop is dealt with. But this area is so important. Look at all the stone and gold here. Oh, man. The thing with ELO is it's arbitrary with small amounts of games. Yeah, there, there, there's that as well. I don't know. I know they're ELO, but I don't know how many games they played. Right. I just... My thing was... And I know people weren't being, like, really aggressive. I know you guys were just chilling and having a good time, but... I just don't like it when uh, tons of people are claiming someone's a smurf or something. Um... Unless we, like, confirm that. <laughs> Can you tell Blue doesn't know what to do right now? I don't know if I've ever seen that many scorpions in Castle Age. Scorpion attack! And if only there were more pikes. The knights are still so strong. And cut. I know the scorpions are cheap, but this is more than worth it for Blue. Well played. More pikes needed here from Red. Red currently distracted with producing villagers. And, well, I mean, this game goes on, folks. Let's look at the res collected here. Res collected way better for blue. What I would like to see blue do that a lot of players won't do here because of the stress is go raid with a couple knights. Don't give your opponent the fight they want, which is here. Ballistas! Okay, shoot. So the Romans are still new. Give me a second. I'm not going to look at chat. So, ballistas... I thought that... Okay, so scorpions are always cheaper, yes. Their scorpions are affected by ballistics, but I don't think that's after ballistas. Ballistas, I thought, helped their galleys. It's faster firing scorps? Okay, so they fire 33% faster? Got it. Alright, that makes sense. And it also helps their galleys too, then, probably. Hmm. Well, if it helps both, that would make sense where my brain's at. And, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate timing for Ballistas. Having that before with all those Scorpions could have helped out a lot. And there we have the castle now for Blue. And that's a good castle that protects the, the eco here. And the second your eco is protected with the castle is when you could also think about counterattacking with the Knights. And Blue bringing in Relic number two as well. Not see Red getting any, any Monks right now. It's like, just look at the farms, guys. Not only are they Khmer farms, but the, the amount of farms for blue is insane. I'm really curious, though. Like, if blue isn't assertive with raids, I do feel like in Imp, blue might just run headfirst into scorpions nonstop, and the scorpions could maybe do something. There's a lot of army with good upgrades, though, from blue. Uh, big Loser, thank you for the 7 months. Thank you, Bubba, for the 20 months. And Jelger, thanks for the, uh, for the, for the, uh, two gifted subs earlier. New 750 ELO is old 1000 ELO. I, I, it feels like it. I think that's a fair statement that, like, 950 ELO three years ago is 750 or 800 today. But we don't do these games as much, so I don't know. Okay, lots of Scorps on the way for Red. Does Red try and force it here? You can see the castle going up, but if the castle goes up, all your Scorpions die. It's probably not worth it. Scorpions are too slow. You need to back away and give up this hill. Which is fine. Maybe bring your army back here. Castle's gonna go up. Look at all that army from... I'm not going to say it. You guys are going to clip it, especially because I said, don't clip it. Mm. I act like I didn't choose to join this game. <laughs> I think I was right about blue, though. Blue is very aggressive and very active. I would guess that the speed's higher. Yeah, blue seems like faster player. But it's also had way more army, right? So it's just able to use the speed. That's crazy, though. Still having villagers in queue. Good upgrades coming in. Now blue hits Imp and is going to go Trebs to force a push through the middle. I'm still very curious on how well these Scorpions do against these units. Blue's Treb will probably sit here. 
Which means the scorpions could hit it, which means that blue might send the knights after the scorps. They're castellated scorpions, but they fire faster. Oh, 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 here we go! Oh, there go the knights! Um, okay, well, oh, oh, geez. Disaster, okay, well, hype ruined. Well played from blue, we got in close to the scorpions. The scorpions got pulled back. They're firing very quickly here, don't get me wrong. And they are cheaper scorpions still, but blue just has so many units. And the crossbow knight gets, takes care of the job. Arbalest now too, so extra attack on the arbs. And red's got 27 scorpions in queue. Hey, props to red. Red knows how to play a Civ. Red says scorps, scorps all the time. Blue, though, should be able to tread down this castle. And see how it goes. Fighting Panda, thank you for the nine months. Says, yay, back to Twitch. Glad to be back. I see people complaining about ads now. So, I'm still trying to get used to it. It was my understanding that if it was like three minutes of ads per hour, that it would be like split up at separate times. But I do see some people say that they seem to get them all at once. I'll try more mid rolls in between games so you get less ads in the games. I haven't been doing that today. But, oh god, ballistics would be a huge help. That pikeman dealing with death there. Red 80 vils on the way to the Imperial Age. Dropping a castle right next to the Trebs is not something I would suggest. And the Scorpion Mass is still really high. Now, Blue could spread out the Knights and go branch out and raid, but Blue doesn't seem to want to do that. So, a little tunnel vision here. Yeah, I know mods can run ads as well. Um, I'm, e I'm easily able to do that in between games if I think of it. But, like, if you're subbed, guys, it's weird, right? Because, like, a lot of you guys aren't getting ads because you're subbed, so... Red's like, Reddit told me that these scorpions were OP. What's happening? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, Blue still hasn't killed Red yet. And Heavy Scorpion could come in. Um, Jeez, dude, Red, that is so many Scorpions. <laughs> 30 Scorpions out of 3 Siege Workshops. <laughs> I would love to see Heavy Scorp right now. I guess can't afford it because it's making Trebs. But yeah. Cavaliers on the way. Get Ballistics! Hmm. I guess no university upgrades here for blue. But Cavaliers coming in, which is great. They'll have full upgrades, and that'll, that'll alone deal with the Scorpions. And these villagers are just repairing the trap like crazy. I think this whole game, though, it, it wasn't pretty much decided by it, but this is a good example of what you can do to get a lead in Feudal Age. The timing of the scouts from blue and how blue used the scouts versus red was the difference. Because blue's eco lead is all on the back of those three scouts, freaking red out, and red never counterattacking. And what's interesting is red had the army to potentially counterattack blue and feudal, but was so terrified of a follow up, never moved forward. Is any can anyone else relate to that? I'm always trying to think like how I could give people tips, right? My tip to you would be if you're playing Arabia, that is, and they attack you, it is better for you to go to their base and try and get some damage in and not in terms of improvement than you just sit at home and then just die anyways. You're going to become a better player if you try and counterattack. They're going to have to work harder if you try and counterattack because they're going to need defense. Make your opponent work for it. Is is blue going to win this game? Are we going to do this, blue? Blue's got 13 Cavalier in one stable now. Is making more stables on the front. We've yet to see a raid from blue. Not raided the sides at all. A couple Cavalier. Oh my god! Make a lumber camp! That is some wood economy there, Nightshade. 
Uh, it's a little unfair to Red. Obviously, Red is, is focused on the Scorpions. Like, Red is dying, so... It's focused here. I like how Red... Like, it's so funny. Obviously, again, Red's not paying attention. But Red is popcap and is going to make a house close to enemy trebuchets. Whoa, look at Blue's Q in this castle. Treb, Elite Ballista Elephant. I think that's Tusk Swords and then Ballista Elephants. So it's going to be Scorpions versus Scorpion Elephants. Blue's Cavalier go in, take out one of the Trebs. Ballista Elephant on the way. Ballista Elephant's really good. I don't know if it necessarily falls into the category of needed here. That one Treb could ruin the dream, but it's probably going to get Treb down by Blue's Treb. And it does. Red is a real fighter, though. I'll say that. Like, enough bad things have happened to Red in this game where I would have expected the GG. <laughs> and it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Red, like... You're kind of stuck with the Romans, but also like, oh, heavy scorpions in queue. Heavy scorpions in queue. Never mind. I believe. Believe, people. No joke. Like, elephants receive bonus damage from scorpions. I think Roman scorpions with ballistas and being heavy scorpion. Oh, no, he's housed. He can't get heavy scorpion. I actually think it could be really good. Blue is stressing me out. Like, Blue... Blue, you can take this game. You've got so much potential in life. You just have to take advantage of it. I know that you named yourself this because you lack confidence in the real world. All right? And that this is a virtual world. And that lack of confidence is carried through to this world. But please, you have potential. Meanwhile, we have Militia for red. So I think Blue is going to be completely fine. Lots of ballistas being masked. Red is stressed out, and we still... Okay, come on. I just really want to see a fight with heavy scorpions here. Please. Red, keep this castle up so you have the pop space to make two more scorpions and then get heavy scorpion. Okay, it's still going to stay up. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, those cavalier will not take out the trebs. That's too much, right? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please. Well, okay. Blue doesn't get the other Treb. The Treb goes down for Blue. Also, we could see Siege Engineers and Chemistry. Man, guys. If Red wins this game because Blue tosses gold units away to Scorpions, I'm going to lose my freaking mind. I actually think there's a world where it can happen. Okay, here we go. How Scorpion could be insane. Blue is choosing to run into the meat grinder. Heavy Scorpion's on the way. Let's see how the elephants do. I don't think they're doing that good. They're an inferior Scorpion unit. Ah! I'm terrified for Blue right now. I'm terrified for Blue. These Scorpions are insane from Red. And Red has consistently made Scorpions and only Scorpions. Villagers are going in against the Scorpions. The Treb goes down for blue. Are you kidding me? What? This is the winning wood line. This is the winning eco. Red. Nightshade. Dude. Okay, watch this. Watch this. What's going to happen right now is Nightshade's going to go start to Treb down the castle. And blue's going to have to attack it. Here we go. Blue has to attack it. Because Blue's going to feel like if I lose these castles, I could lose the position. And let's see what happens in this fight. Elephants go in. For the Treb. Elephants are going to get scorped. Now, Red needs to just not micro his units. Just let the units fight. That's much better. Okay. Blue is going to take out a Treb here, though. The elephants are actually really tanky. So they're holding their own here. Blue's castle. Getting Trebbed down. No repairs. Could easily see this castle go down. Red does have more scorpions on the way. And the scorpions are holding. And Blue's mind is probably melting right now. Like, how have I not won this game? Now, Blue's got a lot of resources 
que uh, queued up in elephants there. So now that the castle's down, no more elephants. We do have double crossbow, which was in queue for a while. Oh, God, Blue, don't... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the tunnel vision is real for coffee. The tunnel vision is so real. Blue refuses to give up the hill. Has never tried to raid at all. Has forgotten that is an aspect of this game. And is just gonna give an opportunity to Red to take out another castle. I can't believe what I'm witnessing. Now, relatable for some. This is a good example. If, if you have a lead in one area, guys, take the other areas of the map. Okay, that's a lesson learned here. Oh, man. Now, Red's making Centurions. Um... It's an interesting choice of unit here. I actually think Halp Scorpion is the way from here. Something that Blue could do that would be more useful than anything else that has been done here is Onager. You upgrade to Onager here, and you'll be in a good position to flatten these Scorps. And then everything else is fine. Oh, man. And now, like, you've committed your, all your focus and your resources here, so that's all Blue is going to continue to do. I could see this getting worse for blue. Oh, geez. Treb's going to go down to the Centurions. So they're the Treb snipers. The Scorpions continue to creep forward. Blue is massing Lightcalf, spending all that food. Is this going to be for a raid or is this going to be for the Scorpions? I mean, for the Scorpions is fine. There's not many Halbs here. The wood is gone! <laughs> the wood is gone for, for Red. Red needs wood. Red's gonna chop wood there. Is Blue teasing us here? Or is this actually throwable? Tell Blue's thinking a little bit more about the sides. Oh boy, here we have a raid. Alright, good stuff, Blue. Blue. Now, if you're red, ideally you're pushing all the time. That way the opponent stays tunnel visioned. I'm going to laugh if he goes to the north where there's no more wood. Oh my god. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> if blue would have raided any time within the last 30 minutes, 30 villagers would have died. Okay, well, there's still 20 there. Centurions and Scorpions pushing forward, so Blue is very distracted. And Scorpions. One crazy death ball here. That is a big Arbalest ball, though, from Blue. There go the Light Cav. They're ready to raid the wood line. Raid the stone. There's nothing here! <laughs> what a funny game. And the Trebs come forward, and the Scorpions come forward, and the Arbalest are getting flattened! What is this game? If Red could just bring the Trebs and take out the castle, that'll be another castle down for Blue, and Blue will have any castles anymore. Now, the raids are still paying, working out. Blue's still got tons of resources, but Blue will not have that much gold. Blue only has two relics for gold, has otherwise, like, spent all the gold on Ballista Elephants and Arbalest and Cavalier. I don't even know if Red noticed any of this. Red just got, like, this one barracks, these three siege workshops, and a dream. No way, man. Can Red do this? Type of... Okay, smile in my Twitch chat right now, guys, live viewers. If you would have resigned at some point before this, if you were Red. I was ready to speed through the game. I didn't think there was any chance. Oh, man. Oh, the panic now on Skirms. They're going to be tossed right into the meat grinder. The light calf have not really been microed around. They were clicked at separate areas, right? You're hoping they find villager kills with that. There's no villagers there. <laughs> the scorpions need do need to advance forward together. Blue is using the trebs against red's trebs. And now red has clicked units forward, so the scorpions should start to shred. Blue is also clicked here, though. Finding some good damage. Red uh, actually looked at home here. That's what's happening. Oh, God, the panic! Villagers, skirmishers, elephants, arbalest, monks, trebs. It's all here. And it is all very awkward. And we are all reminded 
that this game is very difficult to play. Blue could take out Red's TC there, but is losing everything at home. What in the world? This game is insane. <laughs> now, I do think like big balls of light calf can actually work against this because there's not enough helps, right? Big balls of light calf, like tossing away units to snipe these is worth it. You could tell Red set the rally point on that one single barracks over here to kill the light calf. And so the, the halb is actually running through the light calf. The raids from Blue are still doing a great job. <laughs> But this is just insane. Oh, wait. Blue's coming back home. Okay. And then blue's here. Ooh, red's doing something you should never do here and clicking the building with the scorpions. So what you do is you either patrol in on attack stance or you just click the units there and leave them on attack stance. They will That way they automatically attack units instead of the building. There we go. Light cav looping in from behind. Pooping my coffee. Already a little embarrassed that... This is this potential throw is being covered on the channel. Well, I'm sure blue is no clue at the moment. If blue knew blue would be more stressed, but now blue kind of losing everything. There's scorpions and halves. This is messy. This is random. There's still tons of food for blue to maybe make more light cap, but the halves with all that armor are out there, the trebs are taking things down. The score is about to flip. Blue is no army. And is getting Hussar. And is going to make 5,000 Spearmen. All right. Blue's like, well, nothing else worked. What else can we do? It's going to keep Q Pikes and try and work through this wood and this food count. So we're going to have Pikes soon. Oh, man. Oh, more stables needed. <laughs> hey, pro now we need to give props to Blue, right? Because Red was a fighter before to somehow survive. Blue is like, I'm not finished yet. I have more fight in me. And could actually do it. Like, there's only 15 scorpions. And Blue is going to outnumber Red's infantry. This is a problem, but the TC will deal with some of that. I actually think Blue can still win this game. Red's eco still isn't superior. At least in, like, Red's banked. That longsword's obviously going to be really good against the pikes. What blue needs here, and it's so easy, but sometimes, guys, you have to stop feeding the machine. You have to stop sending them into the meat grinder, and you just mass them. So it's like rally point here, rally point here, wait till you get a mass, then go in. This is nuts. Like, guys, we are seeing how difficult this game is. We are seeing the stress. We have like 10 hours of idle eco time for both of them. This has been far from perfect, but it's Loey the Legends, and it's been a grind. And it still could go either way. I think Blue's position is actually superior, but that would be if Blue is able to clear this one time. Just one time. And also, the Scorpions here have 70 kills. That's 70 kills on 13 units. What in the world? Market's going to go down for coffee. Red's still producing mainly out of that one single barracks. Still has units back here catching up on upgrades. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, also, Blue has these Hussars and the Cavalier queued in that one stable. Not using the other stables is really going to hurt. And Blue's going to drop a castle directly beneath Red's castle, which... Funnily enough, could be super clutch. It's also probably not, but like this castle is is aggressive energy castle from blue, which shows me blue's not done. This is actually going to cut off the scorpion production. Uh oh. Oh no. Okay. All right. Well. Oh no. Okay. Well, this is also why. Oh she. Oh oh. Okay. Well, this is about as uncomfortable for you as it is for me to have to say your username again, blue. Now, the Hustlers went in at the same time to snipe the Scorpions. But with 65 Hustlers in queue, I'd like to see Blue wait, potentially. There go those Hussars. Can we get... Can we see a Scorpion go down here? Okay, a couple are going to go down. Husbandry's on the way. You ain't seen nothing yet, people. Blue still has more Vils. 
The castle was just a distraction. I right, believe me. More hustlers on the way. Okay. Can we see more units go down? More scorpions going down. All right. It's still it's it's accomplishing something. Red though. Is red going to add any more eco? Is red going to farm? No. No way, right? Cuz this is where like ideally red starts to farm. Blue's got a relic again. Hussars go in for the treb. Guys. Guys. If the trebs go down, blue can hold on and take some deep breaths. Hussars going in for the scorpions. More hussars from the other side. Red. Can't fall in the wrong hussars because blue's a micro god. Scorpions going down. Good micro there from blue. Really good micro there from blue. Wow. Both players are basically dead living the rest of their game in dreamland right now they both should be toast no one should have the fight to continue on here this is crazy wow and now he's picking off the scorpions that have been coming forward this whole time what a crazy game now only 14 on food for both so their food units are going to be hard to replenish red is going to have Hustlers in his eco soon, but there's still some Halbs there. Um, and the Halbs are a real problem. You need a way to kill the Halbs right now if you're blue. And Hustlers isn't going to be it. What a game. Blue's got a Relic, so that's some gold income. Ring a ling ding 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 there. Town Bell. This game is pure and utter chaos. And now red's gonna drop archer or blue's gonna drop archer rage just to try and go like skirms or something remember though blue doesn't have it never had a lead skirm but hey another treb's been found that's good oh god the scorpions and the rams are on the way though to the group of halbs the scorpion's very confused there Barracks are going to start to go down. The rest of the buildings could go down to the rams. Blue's still picking off scorpions as they come forward. Both players extremely distracted right now. <laughs> Who wins this game, guys? I'm tempted to say Blue does. I think Blue could still do it somehow. Is is going to make feudal age skirmishers. Ah! doesn't have the gold to get elite skirm no ram halb wins this it's a good bet but it's the town bell like look at how much of the eco is not working for red so much so many of these villagers are exactly where i would be inside the town center in the shade more farms for blue like blue is this crazy late game fight we haven't seen red out of farm in an hour, feels like. A couple hussars come in. Nope, not enough there. Red's going to place a TC here with those villagers. Okay, so red's fixing idols and blue resigns! Blue resigns! What? What a game! Wow, we had a point at the start. Where someone out now again, they're probably joking, not gonna call these individuals out, but I had to explain to people. Let's not call people Smurfs, all right? Let's not just because someone's having a good time doesn't mean they're beating up on lower ranked players. And I think what we learned here is something I brought up many times before in Loey the Legends. Is sometimes people are very good, have very good game knowledge, and everything is going fine until they get smacked in the face. And then you just don't know what to do. And there was enough resistance from Red. There was enough of this like awkwardness to the comp, right? Like the Halbs and the Scorpions, where I think Blue maybe never faced up against it before and became extremely tunnel vision. Now we could use the words throw. We could say it was messy. I'm sure both players, when they find out this is a video, will feel as though they could have played 10 times, 10 times better than this. But what this was, was a dog fight an amazing perseverance from both of them, all right? So I don't know what my title is going to be for this, but this game was back and forth. The main thing I will say for you, Blue, beyond maybe, you know, don't tell your mom. You're like, don't be like, hey, mom, uh, I'm in a video, this YouTuber guy. 
maybe don't show her, right? Because she's going to say, which one are you? And then you're going to be like the blue player. And then she's going to feel like she failed you as a parent. But, um, you know, that aside, Blue, what you're going to learn when you rewatch this, uh, and I hope you're not too upset, is just raid. Like, the raid happened a little bit too late. Red Scorpions and Red ha Red's Halves were just enough to hold. But, um, man, what a fun game. Let's look res collected. Blue clearly has the speed. 444 kills, actually, for the scorpion halb combination there from Nightshade, who just kept trucking there. And yeah, Blue collected 103,000 gold. Uh, sorry, resources <laughs> compared to 66k. Wow. What an unlikely comeback there from Nightshade. Um, that is also why if you were not a pro, you should just play on until you are completely dead. Um, this game requires you to have so many aspects handled. Uh, upgrades, positioning, production. It's very easy for things to go wrong. And this is an example of it. So in the rare event that your opponent throws, fight to the very end, constantly put them under some pressure. And that's what Red did. Now, I'm guessing Blue didn't know, guys, and I hope some people learned that Elephants actually take some bonus damage from Scorpions. So the last thing you want to make, well, not the last thing you want to make, but like, yeah, Elephants are tanky, and yeah, maybe Blue still felt like it's a strong unit. I think spending all that food and gold on Elite Ballista Elephant, which is really expensive, really cost Blue here. I think the best thing you could do is go Onager. Onager would flatten the Scorpions. Three to four onagers in combination with everything else Blue did would have won this game a long time ago. And then also, like, raiding. Raiding would also be fantastic. Um, but it's very easy to be tunnel vision. But this is the way, like, this is the way I like to see it, okay? So this has become a coaching session now. But let's just, let's just break it down this way. Okay. So I consider the positioning Blue has here and what has transpired? Forcing a reaction. You've gone for a forward castle. You're in the Imperial Age. What? Red hasn't even clicked up yet. Okay. So, and then Blue's going to click forward. And Blue's going to see this army. Okay? Your opponent is on the back foot. They're waiting for you. And they will find you here in defense. You're in a position now where you've got them. Right? They're stuck. This is for all you tunnel visioners out there. If you get a lead, think about it this way. Your lead is not to control this area. It's to keep them there and move somewhere else in, in an ideal world. I mean, this is 750 ELO, for goodness sakes. Like, But look at it that way. So it's like, oh, great. You've shifted into that position. I'm glad you're there. I'll prep for that. But first, we're going to do this unit here. Unit here. And you get that raid in. It took blue, like all this eco was so exposed, right? And it took Blue until there were no trees back here to finally get the light cap back. I mean, it took some time. And that, I think, is, is really what made the difference in the game. But what I also like about Red, when you have a snowball, do not hesitate, right? So Red just kept pushing. And sure, Blue invested more into these castles and whatever. But notice how Red's always creeping forward. It, Red did not really give Blue the time to, to think and make good choices. It's hard to make good choices and take good fights when you're being consistently pressured. And so I loved how once Red finally got this rolling, Red kept moving. Because right now, like, y you could easily stop and take time to look at this. And there was a little bit of focus put there. Majority of the focus was still always on the front. So, dang. Silent Buer says onagers need micro. Blue doesn't like micro. Maybe Scorps are just su superior Lel grinder. Onagers don't need that much micro. Uh, like, Red was never at a point where he really had that much infantry. I, I agree with you, Scorpions are really good, but like, two to three onagers can flatten 20 to 30 Scorps. So I think with the resources collected, it's always worth it there. Uh, the alternative would be like Bombard Cannons. Bombard cannons, I think, are way more micro-oriented and way worse for weaker players because um, they don't have as much splash damage, so they wouldn't kill as many scorpions or as many units as, as once. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you're absolutely right, though, that the scorpion 
is like the, the scorpion is better at low ranks because of how it works and its pass through damage is really really strong and yeah, we got to see the strength of the roman scorpions here so instead of onager could blue have flooded like 50 hussar sooner and cleaned up the siege yeah i think so um that was an issue for blue like you know all the stables that blue added near the end if those stables were there this i think could just be cleared by the hussars um but there's panic moments blue maybe felt like i don't want to make hussars because my opponent has helps it was really tricky so bernie says i'm actually surprised at what moments players tend to resign it seems more like resigning from tilt and not from the game is lost it, it depends yes and no i think both players could have been seen as there there were situations in this game where i think red could have easily resigned and i would have felt no surprise and i would have felt like red had no chance and same with blue honestly like once blue lost everything on the front you look at this and you think i don't have relics anymore like a little bit longer like right here it's like i don't have relics anymore i have one tc my opponent has two castles i didn't kill many villas with my raid this would be a position where i could also expect a player to think they have no chance of blue's position i think both players just had like really good fight this game blue will be like that is that is not going to go on blue's high right highlight reel <laughs> um but yeah good game anyway sorry i i talked so much at the end of that one I just feel like that was actually like a really good grind of a game and I wanted to really give it uh you know truly talk about all the talking points. Fair to say that this game is just really really difficult and it was a good fight and uh well played to both and uh again we'll leave it at that. Shows you you don't necessarily need speed to win games if you have the right army comp and get a good push going as Blue is apparently the faster player the whole way through that. I almost left that game. I thought it was over. Holy crap.